Hi there, this is Danny, and the channel is You and Me Living Free. I am so happy to be here today and to be talking to you, and thank you for being here. And I want to talk today about um, arriving at the Grand Canyon at the North Rim and my experience of it, because I think it's really valuable stuff. And it's valuable for me personally to work through and to understand, and it's I think it's worthwhile for all of us because... If you watched one of my last videos about being six months into my trip, it's like I do believe that the internal work, the internal stuff that we have is what, uh, is what really counts and helps to create our world and our experience of our, of our world, right? So this is kind of the inner working stuff. And so I'm going to talk about flow versus resistance, and I'm going to do so in the context of getting to the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. So let me set up the story a little bit before I dig right in. So the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. The South Rim, when I went to the South Rim for the first time, and just for anyone who doesn't know, for a lot of you who do national parks and who travel and stuff, you will know this. If you're like me, you didn't. There, the South Rim is what most people will visit and call the Grand Canyon and have an amazing experience. The, the South Rim is amazing. I think it's something like 85 to 90% of visitors will only go to the South Rim. And so most people, that's their impression of the Grand Canyon is South Rim. It makes perfect sense. Number one, it's majestic. It's, it's, it's amazing if you haven't been and there's no way pictures can do any part of justice because like for me, when I drove up, you feel like it's like kind of flat and there's nothing there and you drive up in your car to these huge parking lots and you walk across a bunch of sidewalks and a bunch of concrete and everything and you finally get to the first viewpoint and you're like, oh my God. And it's amazing and I had chills and I felt like a little kid at Christmas and it, I don't think I've ever quite had another experience exactly like that. It's completely unique and astonishing and magnificent. I know I've said enough. Okay, everybody knows the Grand Canyon, right? They call it that. Everybody knows how grand it is. Well, I went to the North Rim because I'm like, let's give the North Rim some love. I love the South Rim so much that let's give the North Rim some love. Well, when you're at, I wasn't at the South Rim, but to get to the North Rim, well, to get to the South Rim is easy. You're, you're, you're coming across I-40, which goes across the entire nation. You land at a gorgeous place called Flagstaff, Arizona, and then you head north for about 40 minutes and you're at the Grand Canyon. Easy peasy. It, it, it's so easy. You, you walk a quarter of a mile from the parking lot and you're seeing one of the best things you've ever seen in your whole life. The North Rim is very different. It's very remote. So if you're at the South Rim, the North Rim is only right here. It's very close. But to get there, you go down, around, over, up this way, and then down and down like this. So even though they're very close, to get to them is to get one from the other is very difficult. So it's remote on the upper, uh, on the upper, on the North Rim. And so I'm getting to the North Rim. I'm driving in and I, I don't really see anything very magnificent. There's a lot of trees at the North Rim, which has its own beauty and wonder, but I was like expecting this big wow moment. When I first got to the North Rim, I decided I was gonna check the campground to see if there was any way I could stay there because the nearest campground to the North Rim is quite a ways away. There was some BLM land, but it was about an hour drive. And I knew I wanted probably three days at the North Rim, at least two days at the North Rim, and I really didn't wanna drive back and forth. I was tired, I was kinda of grouchy. I went to the campground to see if I could get a slot because, you know, even when they say they're full, sometimes they'll have a cancellation or something. So I go up to the campground window and the, the sign says the campground's full. I'm like, yeah, I get it. And then it said at the bottom, you know, attendant will be back shortly, very soon. So I'm like, OK, I'm already in kind of a kind of a disappointed, not great mood. I'm like, okay, the attendant will be back. So I'm kind of rolling my eyes and I walk around for 10, 15 minutes. The attendant never comes back. So at this point, I'm kind of more, I'm more irritated, right? It's building up a little bit more. And then I go to the visitor center. I'm like, okay, let's do the visitor center. Again, the visitor center, 
pretty underwhelming. It's in a bunch of trees. So I started to walk around the visitor center a little bit and off to the side, I could start to see some of the canyon. I start to get a little bit excited, but it wasn't what I was anticipating. I, I was anticipating just, oh my gosh. And instead I was like, oh, okay, there's a little bit, right? So I'm walking along this, this little trail behind the visitor center and there's a little trailhead for Bright Angel Point. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do this little hike. That'll make me feel better because there'll be a great view. There'll be a great view on this hike and that will get me into the mood and it'll make me feel better. But it was very windy and I realized I didn't really have enough. I needed a hat. I needed some sunscreen. I was like, okay, I'll go back to the van and um, gear up. So I walked back to the van, which was no small, tr it was kind of a trek from the little trailhead, even though it was kind of behind the visitor center, you had to go through this little trail even to get there, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm trudging back to the van. Fine. I get to the van, I put on my jacket and my sunscreen and my hat and everything. I go back to the trailhead. At the trailhead, I realize I left my phone back in the van. At this point, I'm just kind of pissed. <laughs> this is not going the way I want. So I decide that instead of just grabbing my phone and heading back out, I was going to sit in my van long enough to figure out what my problem was and to try to shift things, right? To try to get into the right perspective and not force it and not be in a bad mood. I'm like, I'm still at one of the most beautiful places on, on, in the country, if not on the planet. And why am I, why am I in a bad mood, right? I thought I'm gonna sit in the van and I'm gonna figure it out. I'm, I'm gonna figure out why I'm in such a bad mood. And I'm not gonna force myself to do anything else until I figure it out, until I feel better. I go to the van, I'm sitting down, and I think maybe I'll do a video kind of talking through what I'm, see when I'm, what I'm going through because of all this resistance and everything. And also, because sometimes when I talk through things, it helps me process. I'm a verbal processor. So when I talk and hear myself say something out loud, it makes sense and it like becomes true for me or understood for me on a deeper level, right? So I don't know if, where my verbal processors are out there, but sometimes we need to talk things through, even if it's to you, the unseen, until you comment and then I know, then you become real. But anyway, um, I'm like, maybe I'll do a video. So I pull up my, I pull up my camera, I'm in my van, and I pull up my camera to do this talk about, I wonder why I'm in a bad mood and let's, let's work this through. And immediately I get a message on my phone that says, your memory is full, we don't, we don't, you need to adjust things. Your memory is almost full, you can't take any more videos. So I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Like at this point, I was in such a bad mood. I, I was so irritated and I just started to cry a little bit, okay? <laughs> I started to cry a little bit. I'm like, okay, there's definitely someone, the universe is trying to send me a picture here, a message here, and I'm not getting it. So unless the whole world is against me. So when my, when my phone comes up with not enough memory, then I'm automatically pissed because I have the iPhone 10. It doesn't have very much memory at all. You could get an iPhone 10 with double the memory, but mine doesn't have that. Um, I really want an iPhone 13 because of the camera and because of the tons of memory. I mean tons of memory. And when I do my channel, I do everything on my phone because I don't often have Wi-Fi or anything to use a computer for editing or for uploading or any of that. It's so much easier to do on my phone. So everything I do for, my, for, for YouTube and for life and for everything is on my phone. So when I get this message, I'm like, ugh iPhone 10, I wish I had a 13, like all of this frustration and everything is like going, if I had a 13 with double or even four times the memory, I wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> then I was like, then after all those thoughts, then I thought, okay, maybe the universe is trying to tell me something. So I was just sitting there and I'm like, okay. <sighs> if I wasn't dead set on doing this silly hike right now, 
what would make me feel better right now? And then I realize it's been almost six hours since I ate breakfast, right? It was early afternoon. And I was like, well, number one, I'm hungry. So if I'm in a bad mood, I would say nine times out of 10, or at least four out of five times, I'm hungry. <laughs> and I have forgotten to eat or I, I was excited about something and pushed it through and, you know, didn't realize or whatever. So I'm like, okay, food. And then I'm like, okay, what do I have for food? What do I really want? And I decided what I wanted was a, a grilled peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Because peanut butter and jelly is really simple, but it was the wind was starting to really get blustery and blow, and the clouds were moving in, and it was just one of those days where where I felt like I needed some comfort, and that's warm food. Definitely warm food um, is more comforting than cold. So I was like, okay, that's what I want. And then I was like, okay, where should I cook? Should I cook here in the visitor center parking lot, or do I want to go somewhere else? And then intuition, just, just immediately the answer came, okay, go check at the campground. Because it would be really nice to be able to settle into the campground with all those trees and feel cozy and have a bathroom and have water and just have some security and know that I didn't have to drive an hour that night and then back the next morning. I was already dreading it. I was even thinking of just leaving at that point. I thought about leaving the scrapping the whole thing and just driving and leaving. If I couldn't get a campsite, I told myself that's probably what I would do. So I go over to the campground little building and the little guy and he's there. And I said, I know the sign says campground full, but I, I don't need any services. I just need a little par place to park. If you have a tent or anything, um, if you have anything available, I would take it. And he says, I just had a phone call. Just had a phone call. I just talked to this guy, he says. And they're, he, they're in um, tomorrow, but they said they won't be able to make it today and they have it reserved for tonight. So I have one spot. And I was like, I will take it. And already the little voice is singing to me, right? When I went up to the, to the, to the camp um, window the first time, and he wasn't there, the answer would have been no. It would have been, we don't have any slots. And then if I got back to this point, I might not have even gone back to him because I wouldn't have wanted to bug or I wouldn't have wanted to seem, I don't know, irritating or whatever. I'm not extremely assertive to people. I, I tend to kind of be more passive and kind of laid back. So I don't even know if I would have gone up if the camp, if the sign said still campground full. So I'm getting this little nudge, like your timing is perfect. See what happens when you listen to intuition. I'm starting to get that a little bit, right? And so not only that, but their Wi-Fi is down at the campground. And not only do I get a spot, not a tent spot, but a regular spot, like a paved drive-in pull-through spot, gorgeous, in the trees. Not only do I get a spot, but it's free because their internet is down. And he can't take any money because the visitor center, um, the visitor center something is already closed down. Anyway, they're closing for the season at the end of October. We're very close to the end of October. So not only do I get a spot, but it's free. <laughs> so I drive into my spot and it feels so good. And like this relief just starts to wash over me okay and I just feel so much better and I'm crying I don't really know why but I'm feeling so much better and I'm just so happy to be here for the night and I realize I don't have to do one more thing this whole day I can just sit in the van by this time the wind is really blowing and it's getting cloudy and cold and and I make my grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it tastes delicious and I'm sitting there feeling so much better. And then when I was doing my little analysis of like what happened and everything later, that day I ended up not going to, to do the little hike or anything. I ended up staying in my van, staying at the campsite. But here's the thing also. The next day I got up and I did the Bright Angel Point hike. And the next day 
it was brighter and sunnier. There was still some, a little bit of cloud cover, but there were still the puffy clouds, not like big cloud cover, like it's going to snow or anything. And it was glorious. And what I realized was if it had been as windy as the day before with that wind advisory that was moving through, I would have never done the hike. If I had gone the day before, if I had remembered my camera and pushed through, I wouldn't have been able to do that hike because I was so scared going across those little narrow things that if the wind had been gusting, I, I would have been way too afraid. Uh, because when the wind gusts like that, I get these images of it like somehow knocking me off my feet, like some freak accident <laughs> where it just tips me off balance a little and I fall over. Like those are the kinds of things that go through your mind when you're af afraid of heights. So I imagine if you're afraid of anything, afraid of water or whatever, like you, you start catastrophizing in your mind. You start really thinking of like a worst case scenario, no matter how improbable and it seems real and it, and it scares you, right? At least that's what happens for me. I don't have no expert. But um, so then I really realize that things have really clicked together all for my benefit. But here's the resistance part too. When I first came into the North Rim, I was already frustrated. I was already feeling a little depleted because I had done a bunch of time in Page, Arizona. And if you saw my video about Paige, you know it was kind of frustrating being around there because I really needed while I was there to edit and upload and process like four or five videos. I really needed and I only got two done because the process was kind of frustrating and because I was busy doing things. When I was there, I would do Antelope Canyon one day and I would do um, something else another day, you know, the Horseshoe Bend another day. So I was busy doing all this stuff. I was kind of backed up when I got there, then I was busy doing stuff and then I only did a couple of videos and edited and uploaded before I left, before I just kind of had enough. I was like, okay, I'm ready for something different. And I went to the North Rim. But what I didn't realize was just, I didn't realize how, how isolated and how um, there were no cities between Page and really the North Rim. There were a couple of places on the map where I thought, okay, this is a city and I will, Jacob Lake, Jacob's Lake, I think is one of them that's just north, an hour north or so of the North Rim. Um, I thought, okay, it's a, it's a town, it's a city. I can, I'm sure they'll have a library, whatever. I can upload my videos there. I can have that. No, it was a little tourist stop on the side of the road. It was no city at all. So I just, I, I was behind. Then that put my camera meant my camera memory was full. I couldn't delete anything because I hadn't made my videos yet. So if I deleted them off my camera, I wouldn't be able to make the video for YouTube. I couldn't upload anything to YouTube because I didn't have any Wi-Fi. You see where this is all leading. All this momentum of all this frustration was already swirling and I wasn't paying enough attention because I was having a good time. There were all these wonderful things to see. I, I, I was having a good time, but still the frustration was kind of building in the back. So the time I got to the North Rim, again, you know, nothing was going right. Nothing was going to plan. And so I had built up all this resistance. So all that I was getting is, okay, you forgot your camera. Okay, the campground's full. Okay, you are in a terrible mood. And, and all of the I was in resistance, so that's all I was attracting to me was more and more and more resistance. And then I took the time and I said, okay, what will make me feel better? What's going to make me feel better right now? And then took that step and then the next step and then the next. And then before I knew it, I was in flow again. And before I knew it, I got up that next morning. I went to bed that night happy as a clam, just happy restful, got a great night's sleep. Even though I couldn't upload my videos, I actually edited a couple of videos which made me feel better, like I was making progress and stuff. It felt really good. So I have really talked about this enough, but I do, I do more and more see very clearly the difference between being in resistance and being in flow and how of course I'd always rather be in flow. And the key is to catch it earlier and to notice it when it's small, 
so that you can kind of course correct, kind of do what you need in the moment to kind of get out of it. I really feel like my whole life coming into this trip and quitting my job and everything, my whole life was this resistance. My, my whole life was based in resistance kind of forcing myself to do things and not really wanting to and and if I had and if I had honestly said what would bring me joy or relief right now it would be not to have to go back to work <laughs> not to have to finish the day at work or the week or the whatever but I was in constant resistance being in a job I didn't love anymore being in a job I was I was burnt out at and and being in that constant resistance just cut me off to so much flow. And it wasn't really until I really decided, come hell or high water, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna take this time, I'm gonna make this particular dream come true, that that resistance started going. And then there was so much more magic that opened up. There was so much more that life had for me that I couldn't have imagined even in the beginning. And I think that is the point. I don't really know how this whole life thing works. I've been on this journey, right? Like a lot of people to understand the nature of God, the nature of consciousness, the nature of the universe and how things work. And I have had so many theories and beliefs and things along the way, but it is an ever-changing, ever-evolving opinion and perspective that I have. And I don't even bother to name it or to call it out loud because it is constantly changing and moving. But I do know this. Moments like this, where I think about resistance and flow, show me there is something bigger unfolding here. And in order for me to reap the benefits of the bigger unfolding and the, and the field of infinite possibility and all that that entails, for me to be in the flow of that and catching all the good that life has for me, it's important to ask the question and to be in joy and in peace and in no matter what's happening to take that step back and to say what do I need right now to get my head right what do I need right now to shift this because something isn't right here when I'm when I'm in a gorgeous place have quit my job to travel for a year and I'm walking into a national park and I'm feeling you know disappointed or frustrated or any okay this these are clues to me that I have some work I need to do, <laughs> that there's some stuff to look at here. And so I think that's all I'm saying. You know, I, I, I ponder the big questions in life, but I don't have the answers. I think people who just seem so sure of the answers and so sure of how everything works um, are a lot of times right from a certain perspective. It's kind of like... Um, I don't know if you'll want to stick around and listen to this. I'll, I'll go into, a, I'll blabber on a little bit more, but <clears throat> if you're not into this stuff and you want to quit now, I totally, totally get that. Bye. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. But what was I going to say? Um, I remember, um, you know, nature versus nurture, right? If you look back in like the study of psychology, right, they have they have the, these two competing schools. Is it nature or is it nurture? Is it your genes and everything you're born with and, and, and your physiology and your biology that make you the way you are, that makes whatever? Or is it your environment and your influences and your your ecosystem, your parents and your and all of that? Is it nature or is it nurture? And the answer ends up being, well, it's both. <laughs> I kind of feel like these big topics are really sort of similar. You're like, is it God or is it a vibrational universe? And you're like, well, maybe it's both. Maybe what you call God is really this version of, of process that brings everything together, blah, 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 right? Like, I think there's so much more commonality than what we think there is. And I think you know, all roads lead to the same place. And that is kind of the growth and joy and peace and the fact that we are all one. Me, 
and that rock over there and you and the sky and our neighbors, everybody. We are part of one great big organism, right? And I want to be in the flow and not constantly resisting that. And so I'm going to do everything that I can each and every day to be in that flow. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know how to do this every single time when I'm in real life. If I'm working a job, doing things I don't want to do, I don't know how to run my life anymore doing that. Because now that I've had this experience of not having to do it, I don't think I can go back and do it. Not that I can't go back and work a job. I, I think I can work a job, but I can't work a job I don't really, really like and really, really want to do. I either love it or I just enjoy every part of it or whatever. I don't know what in the world that job is going to be unless it's going to be somehow working for myself. I have no idea. But what I'm saying is I'm putting my sails up. I'm ready to catch the wind for whatever the universe has, for all of the good that it has for me. And so to do that, I need to stay in flow and I need to stay in joy and appreciation and have my head on right. And, and I will just continue to try and do that again and again and again and again as soon as we get off course even a little bit because his course corrections are so much easier when you start when they're small, excuse me, versus if you wait until they get bigger and bigger or carry them around for a couple weeks or even months or years before you realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm forcing myself to do all this stuff and it's making me in a really bad mood. Anyway. Man, if you made it to the end of this one, you deserve a medal, and I love you, and I am sending tons of love from my heart to yours, and, um, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, bye-bye.